Are you refusing to accept my present? How rude are you? My mother-in-law pushes a filthy package toward me. The bag is strangely heavy. You're being too kind. I turn her down softly. As usual, she forces in a harsh voice. I want you to have it. Are you still saying no to me? It's not that I don't want it, but you are ungrateful to refuse someone's kindness. My son picked the wrong woman for wife. I've done so much for you, and you just dismiss me like I'm a nuisance. Are you going to pretend that I've never done you any favors? You haven't done anything to make me feel indebted to you. I said it in my mind, but I could never say it out loud. She hates me and looks down on me. She's furious and shoves the package into my chest. Whatever, just take it. She intently looks at me and signals me to open it. When I reluctantly obey, no. My name is Lucy. I live with my husband in an apartment near him. I live with my husband in an apartment near his parents, and I'm pregnant for the first time. We're expecting a baby girl, and have decided to name her Martha. Today, my sister-in-law Jessica is over at my house. Sorry for coming on such short notice. Thanks to you, my move went smoothly. I'm glad you came. You've been through a lot. I served coffee to her and juice to my nephew, Keith. She just filed for divorce from her husband and moved into an apartment near my in-laws' house. It's close to my house too. She's friendly and easy to talk to, so I like hanging out with her. When my baby is born, she'll be able to play with my nephew often. He's a quiet boy and always hides behind his mom. When my eyes meet his, he smiles shyly and asks, "Aunt Lucy, can I touch your belly?" "Of course you can." He's still timid, but he must be curious about my big belly, and becomes chattier than normal. He gently strokes my belly and whispers into my ear. Your baby is a girl, isn't it? Yes, but how do you know that? I just found out the gender not long ago, and haven't told anyone yet. While Keith is in the bathroom, I mention Jessica about it, about the gender of my baby. Oh, you found out the sex? What is it? It seems that she didn't know from her reaction. It's a girl. I'm thinking of naming her Martha. Keith just guessed the sex of my baby right. He's amazing. She looks a little astounded, then chuckles. He seems to be able to guess things like that. He can see a little into the future or something. It's like he has some mysterious power. I see. That's amazing. But. It seems he can only vaguely see things. He hasn't guessed the lottery numbers right. Too bad. I smile, watching her laughing at her own joke. Keith has a mysterious air around him, so I'm able to accept her story without any resistance. Contrary to my good relationship with my sister-in-law, my mother-in-law Joanne never liked me. What's she giving me this time? I've been telling her I don't want anything. I sigh at the side of a bag in front of the door. She's been harassing me by giving me unwanted presents. It's not obvious harassment, but she gives me food that's borderline spoiled, or disheveled clothes that no one would want to wear, unwanted things that are clear no one would be happy to receive. It's tricky as she could justify that it was in her best interest. 
It's a way of doing things that neither my father-in-law nor my husband Matt noticed. Joanne, you're being too kind. I refused softly, but she retorted in a harsh voice. I want you to have it. How can you say no to that? I'm not saying no, but you are ungrateful to refuse someone's kindness. You haven't done anything to make me feel indebted to you. She's furious and shoves the package into my chest. I once discussed this with Matt, but he's been spoiled by her and doesn't even suspect a thing. She doesn't have any bad intentions. He shrugs it off. It's frustrating that he makes it sound like it's my fault for not being grateful. Recently, she escalated, and I received the bag with soil and worms in it. How rude! They say it's good soil for your health, so I went out of my way to get it from my neighbor's garden. Satisfied to see me freaked out, she couldn't contain her laughter. As she was leaving, she told me to get rid of my nasty bag as soon as possible. This isn't the only harassment. On weekends, she comes over under the guise of helping a pregnant daughter-in-law and stays all day. Matt, is she doing her chores? It looks dirty over there. I'm skeptical if she's making a comfortable home for a hardworking man like you. She sighs dramatically at me. Oh no, Matt doesn't like this. You eat the fried chicken I got for you. There's French fries too. You love fried food, don't you? Thanks, Mom. You know me well. She has always been negative about my cooking, which is mainly vegetable-based. Even so, she eats free meals I serve and leaves a lot of fried food that Matt likes. If she's going to criticize my food, why does she eat them? Matt's getting better thanks to her oily food. Of course, she has never helped me with housework. Rather. She emphasizes that pregnancy is not an illness, and even forbids Matt to help me. I'd like you to at least clean the bathroom for me. Pregnancy is not an illness, is it? That's what my mom says. You can do it once you're not sick. He's been influenced by her, so it's very troublesome. I've been fed up with my life, but one day. I noticed that Joanne hasn't been bothering me with unwanted gifts, and stopped coming over. Ugh! It's since Jessica and Keith moved closer. I ask Jessica what's been going on. She gives me a troubled look and sighs. Keith's been doing mischief at in-laws frequently and making Joanne crazy. He poured ketchup all over the clothes my mom had put together. And knocked over a container full of food. He doesn't seem like that type of boy. Before moving here, he had never caused trouble. I wonder if it's because of the divorce. She's also shocked and has been troubled by his behavior. I mentioned it to Matt, but he says it's just a child's mischief. Don't make a fuss over nothing. He clicks his tail in annoyance and gets ready to go out. Where are you going? Huh? I'm going to work, of course. I'll be late today. Then he disappears behind the door. Work? It's the weekend. He's been working on his day off a lot lately. I coolly watch him leave the house. Moments later, Keith shows up alone. What are you doing here? Aunt Lucy, I need to tell you something about my grandma and Uncle Matt. I sense a disturbance in his voice. Actually, I'm beyond shocked by what he tells me. 
The frustration I've been holding back until now boils up as anger from the core of my body. I see. Thank you for telling me, Keith. This is unforgivable. I can't turn a blind eye after being mistreated this badly. An eye for an eye. I'm going to double the payback. One day, Matt, Jessica, Keith, and I gathered at my in-laws' house for my father-in-law's birthday. I made a meat loaf today. Don't be shy to get more. While Joanne brings out already sliced pieces on each plate, Matt leaves to get salt and pepper. I take the opportunity to switch seats and sit next to Keith. When he returned, he sat down at my previous seat. The meat loaf Joanne served me is now in front of him. That's it. When he's about to put a piece into his mouth, no, Matt, stop! She swats his fork away with her hand. It fell to the floor with a clatter. What the heck is wrong with you, Mom? Matt stares at her with wide eyes. All of us are stunned, and the table falls dead silence. Is something wrong, Joanne? L- no, no, it was just a bug. A bug? There's no such thing anywhere. What a lame lie! As I criticize her in my head, sensing the awkwardness, she rushes to excuse herself. I really saw the bug. Anyway, why are you sitting there? That's Matt's seat. She glares at me. This was the slice I serve you. She mutters in a low voice as she looks at the piece on the floor. What do you mean? It's apparent that she's done something to my food out of spite. Then Keith, who's sitting next to me, pulls out Jessica's phone and shows us the screen. Look, Grandma. Oh, wh- what? He plays a video of her pulling some kind of powder on my meatloaf. What is it, Mom? What did you put on the food? The bizarre image made me shiver. If Aunt Lucy ate it, she got a stomachache, and her baby suffered. Is that true? What are you thinking, Mom? Keith shows us the other voices he's been recording. There is footage of her intentionally putting the eggs she sent to me under the sun to make them go bad, picking up an ugly flower vase from the garbage dump. And collecting dirty used clothes from neighbors, it also shows us she's humming and stuffing them into cardboard boxes. Her face turns wider and wider as these images are revealed one by one. What is this? This is harassment. What's going on? What have you been doing to Lucy? My father-in-law and Jessica are flabbergasted. Keith, you knew, and you've been playing pranks on us all this time. I poured ketchup on the old clothes she was going to send to Aunt Lucy. The food I turned over was made from rotten ingredients. I ruined it before she could give it to her. Thank you, Keith. He was protecting me and my baby. In the form of mischief, he could see the future that Joanne was going to harm us, so he interfered and recorded evidence on the phone. I'm so moved by the fact that this timid boy has been protecting me and my baby, that tears well up in my eyes. You guys are overreacting. That powder is just a laxative. What's the big deal? What are you talking about? Pregnant women can't take any medicine. That's right. What if something happens to the baby? Joanne glares at us all. Keith doesn't listen to me, so I want Matt to come back home, and I don't like the fact that the baby is a girl. So she's been harassing me without her husband, who hates crookedness, to find out. Mom, what the heck? Matt. 
who remained silent, blames her. My eyebrows twitched at the sound of his voice. How can you blame her? Let's get a divorce. Wait, what? What's this all of a sudden? I pulled out a report compiled by the private investigator. It contains the evidence of him having an affair with a colleague. My in-laws are stunned by his sudden turn of events. You told your mom that I didn't do my chores and that I was a bad cook. You regretted marrying me. You were even encouraging her to harass me, weren't you? You were hoping that I would initiate the divorce. You didn't want to pay alimony, so you didn't want to do anything about it yourself. You took advantage of your mom. You're the one who started it all. No, what are you talking about? I'm just... No excuse. I have proof here. I'll give you the divorce you want, but you're going to pay alimony. When I finished scolding him, he shrinks into his chair. When Keith came over alone the other day, he told me about Joanne's harassment and Matt's affair. I guess he could see the future. Since then, I had been gathering evidence and decided to expose it when we all gathered like this. I'm so sorry, Lucy. I've been fed up with my mom's favorism toward Matt. I was aware that she didn't think well of you, but I couldn't say anything because I've been supported by my parents since moving back here. I had no idea that the two of them were in it together. I am so sorry. I'm going to cut ties with them. Cut ties? Matt, this is what happens when you cheat on your wife. You were harassing her badly too. They start blaming each other. Knock it off! Get the heck out of here, both of you! My father-in-law roars and throws them out of the house. I apologize on their behalf, Lucy. He seems deeply affected by the event. Then he filed for divorce from Joanne. I also lodged divorce papers with Matt's consent. By the way, when Jessica decided on divorce, Keith told her that her ex-husband was cheating on her. She didn't believe him at first, but when he kept telling her, she finally looked into it and found out about the affair. She was frantically gathering evidence at that time. Keith observed her and learned the importance of the evidence. One day, when he came to visit me at home, I told him I had a regular checkup the next day. He strongly advised me not to go. But I must go. Then please, take a different route than usual. Promise me. I sensed something was up and took a different route to the checked up. When I got home without incident and turned on the TV, I saw Joanne's name on the screen. What on earth? I had always walked on the clinic for exercise. On that same road, she was run over by the car that had lost control. It was reported that she had broken her leg. My father-in-law told me later that she had been stalking me out of resentment. I guess she was waiting on me that day. Keith was right about taking a different road and protecting me from her and the accident. The accident was brought on by my grandma, he said. He had a point. It's the law of attraction, or cause the effect, or something like that. I guess if you hold a grudge or are obsessed with someone, maybe the negative energy will come back to you. That's avoid doing things that have no benefits to anyone. I learned this lesson well from this incident. Jessica and Keith moved in with my father-in-law. I'm glad that they come to visit me more often now that we are closer to each other. Since the birth of my daughter, Keith has become more expressive. Why is Martha crying? Is she hungry? He seems unable to predict the baby and is at a loss. 
It's so cute to watch him trying hard to put her to sleep. You're such a good big brother. When I praise him, he turns his face away from me, looking somewhat uninterested. It seems he doesn't like being called big brother. I can't predict the future, but I'm so looking forward to it. I giggle at the sight of my adorable daughter and nephew.